I promise to critically examine the systems and experiences that impact every person's health and ability to receive care. I vow to use this knowledge to uplift my patients and disrupt the injustices that harm them as I forge the future of medicine. I promise to self-reflect diligently, to confront unconscious prejudices, and to develop the skills, knowledge, and character necessary to engender an inclusive, equitable field of medicine. Let us bow our heads in recognition of the gravity of this oath. Okay, what you just heard was a bizarre oath to wokeness that Columbia University med students were asked to take on campus. Now, it sounded like something you'd hear in a, in a movie about some communist regime. Well, imagine how shocked our next guest, guest was to hear it. After defecting from North Korea to the United States, Yeonmi Park was excited about starting a new life with freedom. But she also observed and experienced a shocking trend towards censorship here and compulsory groupthink. In fact, it was so chilling, it reminded her of the brutal regime she risked her life to escape from. Now, when she addressed this in speeches on college campuses across the United States, she came immediately under attack and faced censorship and even death threats. She explores all of this in her new book called While Time Remains, A North Korean Defector's Search for Freedom in America. Human rights activist Yeonmi Park joins me now. Yeonmi, what did you say exactly that triggered this intense reaction, even death threats? <laughs> the things that I said, how it's so important for individuals to have ability to defend and protect themselves from the government, which means owning a gun. I always imagined when somebody does a wrong thing in North Korea or say a one wrong word, it was going to kill up to three to eight generations of our family members. And imagine when North Korea, if they had guns, the regime would not do that to its own people. So when I came to America, I realized that Americans have this unique rights that was given by the Constitution, that they have a right to defend their rights from the government. Of course, I sat on my YouTube channel publicly, and that video got censored. And from there on, I was named as a bigot, racist, right-winger, CIA agent, paid by Fox. I mean, anything that you can imagine I've been named for. Now, Yanmi, a Pew Research poll this came out last uh, September, found that Americans with postgraduate education are most likely to have a positive view of socialism. What does that say to you about the quality of the American higher education system? I'm really not surprised because when I was starting my education as a free person in this land of free, I couldn't believe it because the lectures, the messages that my professors were teaching us was exactly the same thing that my North Korean teachers taught me. How so? It was exactly the same. I, Ex so explain basically, that. yeah, in, in North Korea, they say all the problems that we have is because of the greedy capitalists, because of American imperialists. And when I come to Columbia University, they say the exact same thing that all the problems that we have in this world is because of the white men and the greedy capitalism. And therefore, we need to dismantle the system, destroy this country in the name of equity that brought my home country into what it is, which is a modern day Holocaust. I want Americans across the country to understand how important it is that you're delivering this message in your book and on the angle tonight. And in North Korea, they teach children to hate the United States. They ridicule our Constitution, our founding. They you know, basically call all of America racist. You go to Colombia and you find the same thoughts expressed there by academic leaders, correct? I don't even know what happened to America. I only came here eight years ago. But as a child, I mean, I, I'm a mother. I'm raising a child in this country. And I'm so worried because the first thing that my mother told me as a young girl was, don't even whisper because the birds and mice could hear me. She said my tongue was the most dangerous thing that I had in my body because I could say the wrong thing. In America now, of course, we are not putting them in the fighting squad, but if you say the one wrong thing, your livelihood is lost. Your dignity is going away. 
and you are forever marked. And even my son, who, who was, was only two years old, and the some parents noticed that I was open, I guess, uh, conservative. They would tell their children that don't play with my son because he's a child of bigots. And yeah. Patrick was thinking, we punish family members for somebody's political opinion. And when I became American citizen last year, my interviewer asked me, have you ever persecuted anybody for their political opinion? If I said yes, I could not become American. So the people forgot what it means to be American in this country. Well, I think when you ask people today, what does it mean to be an American? A lot of young people get so many mixed messages in school. The, the in instinct to say America is freedom, it's liberty, it's a right to speak your mind, it's a right to self-defense. I mean, that doesn't come to mind because it's under attack relentlessly. Mm -hmm. Yanmi, your book is so important. Uh, I think of all the uh, people would love freedom, freedom to speak out in North Korea tonight and how uh, we're blessed to have you in this country. We need more people like you. Yanmi, thank you very much for writing this book and thank you for having the courage to speak out and not be afraid. We really appreciate you. Thank you.